So in this video, I'd like to go over how to approximate irrational numbers. So we have a number here in the first example, the square root of 30, and the squiggly lines here mean approximately. Because 30 is not a perfect square, it's an irrational number. So what our goal is to try to do is to find about, about what number is the best approximation of the square root of 30. And there's a couple ways to do this, but I think one of the best ways to do is to begin formatting it by rewriting the problem as the square root of 30, and then identifying the nearest perfect square below this, which in this case is 25, and the nearest perfect square above, which is 36. Now, how this helps us is that we know the square root of 25 is 5, and that the square root of 36 is 6. So a good approximation for the square root of 30 is approximately 5 point something. We know it's 5 point something because it falls in between these two perfect squares. So but that's not an accurate enough of a guess. We want to get something a little more specific. One of the ways to do that is to kind of figure out what half does it fall in. If we were to split the difference between 5 and 6 to a middle number, and it was 5.5, .5, what this does is it kind of gives us an upper half, a lower half and an upper half. And the way we can identify whether the square root of 30 is closer to 6 or closer to 5 is by identifying whether the number 30 itself is closer to 36, which in this case it's 6 away, or is it closer to 25, which in this case it's 5 away. So since the square root of 30 is closer to 25, we have an approximation that would fall in uh, this range here. It should be something between 5 and 5.5. .5. So a reasonable guess might be something like 5.3 or 5.4. These are values that fall within this range. But if we want to get more specific for our answer here, what we want to do is think of the the range from 25 to 36, it's a really weird squiggly line, but the total distance from 25 to 36 is a gap of 11. And 30 is 5 elevenths of the way to the next perfect square. So it's not all the way there, it's not right in the middle, it's 5 elevenths of the way there. So you take this number 5, the distance between 25 and 30, and divide it by the total distance, 11. Now we can approximate this. This is about a half, but it's slightly under a half. So what we're going to do is actually do some long division, only to about the hundredth place, so we can get a good approximation here. I set that up incorrectly. Let's go with the 11 on the outside, 5 on the inside. Cannot go into 5, so we have to annex 0. We'll add a decimal at the top, and it doesn't go into 5, so we go 0 there. 11 goes into 50 four times, a little lag, and that is 44. If we do some subtraction, we'll get 50 minus 44 is 6, annex another 0, and 11 goes into 60 five times, and that's 55. So we have now, because we went 5 elevenths of the way, this decimal here is our best approximation for our number here. So we have a really good approximation of the square root of 30, it, it would be approximately 5.45. So try to apply this to any square root that's a non-perfect square. Find the lowest perfect square below, the lo highest, the nearest perfect square above. Find the distance between the two. Take the this first number and divide it by the total distance to get your decimal. Now when approximating non or not squares, but when dealing with pi here, the way you would deal with this expression, it's an expression because we have 2 times pi. That's what, there's, there's no operation here that's multiplication. So we're going to do 2 times the approximation for pi. I hope this is one you just kind of have to memorize, that, that pi is approximately 3.14. So if we're approximating this, we can do 3.14 times 2, we got a really bad lag here, and 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, and since there are two decimal place values, we need 2 in our product here. So a great approximation of the expression 2 pi is 6.28.
So I hope that the, this strategy here gives you, uh, sheds some light on how to approximate irrational numbers, both non-perfect squares and ones that deal with pi. Good luck.